I want to talk to you afterwards. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, March 25th, 2019. Uh, if we could have a roll call, please, ma'am, to establish quorum. Harry Meyer. Here. Melissa Green. Here. Terry McClung. I'm here. Mickey Schneider. Here. Susan Harmon. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. We have six. Before we get going, would you please turn off your electronic uh, phones and stuff uh, so it won't interfere with our recording device. And the pledge of allegiance. I pledge, now, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. All right. Get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, motion second. Any uh, additions, corrections? Um, since uh, our lawyer isn't going to be here, should we uh, move number two to the next meeting? Are we doing a minute? Or no? uh, the agenda is first. We're doing the agenda <coughs> right now. Uh, yeah, moving uh, the unfinished business of the ordinance addressing the animals. Yes, number two. Number we'll two, and also probably the ordinance for number one under new business. All right. Okay. All right. Is there anything else anybody have? If not, all those in favor of the agenda as amended, sing five by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Get a motion to approve the minutes for March 11th. So moved. Second. Okay, motion and second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes that submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. Uh, we do have some vacancies in the Planning Commission and also have one vacancy on the CAPC. Uh, and I think at this time, I'd like to get Dwayne up here. So, Director of Public Works and talk about give us an update on our lead and copper reports. Just a bit oh, we we just just now have our uh, consumer confidence report down for 2018. So that'll that'll we'll get that on the on our website. It's on the the state website right now. And it's, it's, the wording's a little different. It's basically the same, and uh, everybody could check that out. Uh, <clears throat> like we said, we're, our last, uh, I think the concern was our last run, we were close to the limit, our 90 percentile. So that's why we're, we're going to, very interested to in see our next run, which is coming up, what we're going to, what we're going to come up with. So, uh, but uh, <clears throat> I think, some of the confusion was, um, you know, the city of Harrison had busted their limit, and uh, and so back through Carol Boone, we're starting a a, 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 a treatment of the water from Carol Boone is going to try to raise the pH, to try to, to to make the water a little less corrosive, you know, because we're talking about the lead, the plumbing, and the, and the uh, residential structures and. Uh, of course, uh, corrosion will happen with any metals, of course, in the water, especially between dissimilar metals. So it's just a matter of the, of the amount. So this is, the states approve this, and this is, should help us, too. So we're going to see how that goes. Uh, but um, we, we're going to be contacting people. There'll be some other people that haven't been contacted before on this, our sampling pool. Uh, but... Uh, but I think, you know, we had some stuff that just came out in the paper, so um, has anybody got any, any questions? Of <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I have a few. Um, just bear with me. I understand a little more about the causes of the lead in the water supply as well as the testing procedures thanks to the documentations you have on your website. I am glad to know that we have kept up with a more frequent testing and sampling, far more frequent than is required by the state, correct? Okay. Over the past 11 years. Is it true that the state health department told you that Eureka Springs tests for lead more frequently than any other city in the state? Well, the 
Well, we were the only ones to, to request a, a extra testing okay. outside of because the way it's set up, uh, you can it starts out at a six month interval and then okay. you work up and then you get to a three year and. Uh, and, and we were the only ones that had asked that we, we didn't want to wait okay. three years. We want to test every okay. year. So so is this te testing frequency required by the state or are we just doing it to keep on top of things? Yeah, well, we had been now. The, the thing as we move forward is we're going to, everybody within the Carol Boone Water District is going to kind of start fresh okay. because of this treatment. And uh, so, but everybody had, had been on a three year uh, cycle until this till Harrison you okay. know busted so okay but we had to get approval that was a, they didn't know if they could they would allow that because they're they're paying for the testing so uh, okay. but we we did in that and then it kind of showed that you know after the fluoride it, it seemed to okay. it, it raised uh, you know so we're, we're, we're wanting to, and we're glad we're going to go back and so we, we look to go two times this year so we're going to test twice okay. this in 2019 okay Good, good. Well, I'm glad that Eureka Springs was in opposition to the fluoride along with a number of other cities prior to the 2015 enforcement of fluorid fluoridation of our water supply. While some debate whether fluoride causes lead levels to increase or not, isn't it true that our leads per part per million have increased since 2015? Yeah, I mean that's of course the health department is not. They don't look at that as a possibility, but, right. but they have, and that was the thing that we were worried about, and that's what we okay. we we made that point when this first came up, when that law fell upon us. So it's been a worry ever since. It isn't, and I just caught something about it on the news. Isn't there something going on in Arkansas now that cities of a certain size can refuse it? Well, it's 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 set at five thousand. Uh, there is there's been uh, a couple of water uh, providers that haven't complied yet, mm -hmm. and they've all they've all lost. But there's a new bill uh, they're looking at now that would would change the uh, the uh, amount of persons treat you know served by that. But it, but it wouldn't catch Carol Boone. Okay. So, okay. I mean, it doesn't look look like this session there's any hope. Okay. Well, well, bear with me. I've got a couple more. Is it true that the known galvanized pipe in the city's water distribution center was replaced in 2008-2009 time frame? I think this was concentrated in the Ridgeway, Linwood neighborhoods. Yeah, that was a lot of that was some lead service lines. You know, when we we were looking back then of, of the city, you know. It last decade ago, whatever it was, were beyond the limit, and we discovered that there was some lead on the city side, and and we we assume there are probably obviously some still out there, but you know finding it and getting it out of there. But we we found a cluster in that area, and we took that out. Uh, you know that's that's one thing. Now the state <coughs> EPA is you know the fear of you know if you take if you're cutting that and whatever we were we were completely replacing it but okay. you have to be very careful removing that you know stir it up right. okay so the remaining galvanized or lead piping that remains is on private property uh, the, yeah the, well, the 99 percent of it and we're when we pull our tests you know off the off the mains uh, and most structures we're, we're not pulling anything you know as far as lead content but but we we're not saying we're 100 percent out of that, and mostly what the galvanized we had was just fittings and stuff. But there was there was some lead taps from the main to the meters. Okay. And uh, and that's something we're still, you know, if we discover it, it, it comes out. Okay. While well, we're still under the action levels of lead, assuming continuing increase of 10, which is what is the action plan for us here in Eureka Springs? To migrate the lead levels, what's the next step? Well, if the way they look at it, the state, you know, it's added there, but, but it's the responsibility of the individual water system. Okay. So a control plan would have to come back to to the city, but with Harrison, who had started theirs, and, and for some reason they allow like a three-year period to get it started. That's kind of when the talk was that we're close, and, and you know, Carol Boone was going to have to step up, which they did. We appreciate it. They stepped up. And, and so we're putting a corrosion control plan in place now, which okay. will be for the, the right. and we'll see how that goes. If past that, it could get to the point where we're going to have to take over and inject locally, uh, like orthophosphates within the 
within our system. Okay. And, and, and and at this point, Carol Boone won't agree to do that. It will be on our cost. So okay. hopefully, we we think we can. We're going to try everything we do to avoid that. Okay. Good. Good. So it's, it really sounds to me like you guys are really working to control this. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to get into a situation where we are, and, and, it, and if you if you bust too far over and you can't pull back, then the state basically takes it over and tells you what to do, and, and sometimes that's, you know, it's not the most cost-effective way to go. So, right, right. But um, you know, that's that's something the, the the federal guideline at some point is going to change, and they they've kicked it down the road again. But uh, they're going to tighten that down at some point, but. Uh, but right now, you know, we our goal is zero lead, but you know that's going to take a lot of home plumbing to be right. completely redone, <coughs> and we don't have the authority <coughs> to step in. Okay, Mr. Mayor, does the city have any resources to help on up? You know, like grants or something to help no. homeowners? <coughs> Do you know of anything that could help homeowners? That Not that I know of. I don't think the state has anything either. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, some other states have, have made funds. Of course, you know, of course, everybody knows the, the Flint, where the, right, the federal had to step in and, 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 and flow some money in there. But, I mean, if it got to a, a point, there would be some. But, you know, some cities have, have made a voluntary, you know, where the citizens could pay the extra on their bill okay. to cover. They do that sometimes for uh, delinquent payments. Are okay. They're doing that for lead. But that... that with the size of our city, that's it's hard to get much of a, okay. a pot of money. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I just think there's probably some homeowners that may be economically challenged that are, are going to have a hard hard time. Yeah, and that's something, you know, if we can find it and they know it, there's ways to, to, to you know, like, you're flushing, making sure the way you use your water, okay. turning your hot water heater down. There's things to mitigate that and... Uh, you know, they, they talk about the filter, but it, you know, if it's it's our, it's in your plumbing, and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you could you could put a source filter in there and just you know use it one point, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to deal with. And then, of course, we've always said people here, if, if you know, on the filter, they might want to take the fluoride out too, which steps the filter up a little right. bit. Yeah, I, I think we, there's a lot of people that would like that to happen. Is it possible that we could get on our city website what you were just saying, some tips on like the water heaters, how to make <coughs> help home homeowners, just some tips, is that possible? We've got some, that we, yeah, we could, we, could, we could up that, some like you said okay. before as a use, you bet. Okay. That would probably be a good idea. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time with me. You bet, you bet. Okay. <laughs> Mickey. Okay. I had one question that I've got to whole list here. Um, I've been informed that in the home, when you turn your water on for the first time, when it's been off for a long time, like say overnight or whatever, you should let it run for a couple of minutes to get any lead that's been like piled up or something? Well, if you, if you think that there's a possibility that, that, that you have some lead in and sometimes, you know, you freshen it up, but if, you know, uh, say let it run till it's cool. Say if you had a bitter taste in your water, if you saw you know some kind of a blue stain or something in the sink, or you know if you know for a fact you've got some lead or, or Old lead solder. Yeah, it's a good idea. That's because the sample it has to sit for six hours without moving, and that way we could pick it up. Okay. Uh, you know. Well, all these houses that you're using as the ones that they're trying are those you're saying that those pipes are just sitting so what they're what they're sampling is stagnant water so to speak yeah overnight yeah, I mean, we, water we have to count on the, <laughs> the person to, that's, that agrees to do this to agree to you know they sign off that it says six hours and some people of course can't do that and and, mm -hmm. and it has to be where we can get it pick it back up in a, in a timely manner to have it sampled uh, you know there's a 14 day window there so Okay. Okay. Um, so, in regards to all this stuff that Carol Boone is trying to do, has anybody bothered to talk to the state in regards to ending this stupid crap <laughs> like we fought for? I'm serious. Has anybody hit them lately? The whole world is ending it. So, what does Arkansas do? Oh, let's go ahead and do it. Has anybody reminded them of this? Has anybody bothered to send bills to the state? 
since they mandated. And that was something I told Carol Boone, if they were going to be too weak to sit there and fight them anymore, I'd be glad to send all of our city bills for new pipes to walk Carol Boone. And they could either pay Emerson or the city. Why don't we start doing that? Well, we, you know, we've tried to fight it, and, and there's, there's, there's not anything scientific that they'll accept that we can bring in. That's because it's Arkansas, and logic doesn't <laughs> count in this state. The uh, whole world is ending fluoride. The Ozark Mountain uh, Water District. Uh, I think Madison County, they lost in court, and I believe they're going to go ahead and do it. But they're supposedly uh, Ozark Mountain Water District, uh, Mr. Anderson there, they're, they're, if they go through with it, they've voted to uh, move it to the Supreme Court to appeal it. You know, it's based on, and they're, they're basing it on, like, like the Carol Boone used it, to say, you know, the population is small here, and, and York Springs voted against it. Three it's times. It's kind of heavy-handed, yeah, to, to come in and do it. But they, they added the whole county. And so, the, but they just lost in district court, so. So that's know. one loss. Why aren't we grouping together with a lot of other cities in the state? Well, it, it seems that right now all the lawyers are saying it's a lost cause. You, you're going to lose. And you're oh, I'll represent you. I won't give up. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm serious. And I would highly suggest Mr. Mayor and, and Mr. Director of Public Works send the bills to Carol Boone. Make a copy of them and send them on to the State Water Department. I'm serious and say, you mandated it. You paid for it. That might make them wake up, and if they don't pay, say fine. Then we'll but let these companies sue your butts off. Well, they we've they got they to step a, up. They have agreed now to to adjust the pH. Before they had they wasn't going to do that. So we're just kind of taking it a step at a time. If we end it, they don't have to adjust it or add any money. Has that been pointed out to them? Well, I mean, you know, Carol Boone did. They did originally try to fight this and, and of course they, there was a change the of one guy who did died and he had been a long time friend of mine when Jim died that was it and they all gave up step yeah. up to the plate so I there. did so why aren't we still hammering home saying Harrison wants it they can have it cut us up which was the other option they did well, not I, have to I give had, it to I had us attended the, of course we didn't know it was even going to be voted in of course so they had a hearing I did attend that <laughs> but at that point, they weren't accepting to change it. They were accepting how to implement it. So and there was there was some. It got kind of heated, and, and the, the health department got angry and cut the whole thing off. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Mitchell, he he went down and, and had mm -hmm. a couple of sessions trying to, which I think uh, had no effect. No, no of course not, because they were regular people. But if we as cities would gather together. That means the public works and the mayors of every single city. And I know well, Hot Springs is right there next to us. Well, Hot Springs and Fort Smith was right there with us. Yeah, trying to and they, would, they would join us if we would all get together. So call a meeting, discuss it, let's do it. This is well, we'll, ridiculous. We'll check at our options again, but I think you know, they were like us that, that, you know, if it was futile, there's no, you know, for court. If you have three major towns and two of them support this whole state, and you sit there, and, and Hot Springs and Eureka, either one closes, this state sucks. It's gone because we support it. So if we would get together and fight it, like I said, it takes public works and it takes the mayor of every city to get together, have a meeting, discuss it, put your foot down, and tell the state. You mandated, you pay. Well, I'll, I'll contact them. I mean, I've, I've, I've some gentlemen there that and If we agree well, to fight to the see. death, all of them, it would we'll, work. We'll see. And, and, and like I said, this... This is kind of an interest if this goes to the Supreme Court, too. And, and of course, he's he's looking, to, you know, for some of his districts now that want to pay for it. They're wanting to bail out some of those smaller district or water systems. But, uh, but so far, know? the the health department and, and they they come back to the five thousand dollars a day if you, you know, and of course, with, Tom will be glad to bill them. You know, the fear is if we get it changed, then Delta Dental. You know, the talk is of, of, of wanting to refund it. You know, they, they paid, of course, for the implementation of the, of the In all the politicians' pockets. Okay. Can we, you want to go on about the, what, the letter? Or the well, that's what it all comes down to. It's because of the yeah. stupid state mandate. I understand. And Delta was behind it. I don't care if people like it or not. I pay for my own dentistry not doing an insurance thing because Delta is the one behind it. I oh, will absolutely. not implement happen, yeah. insurance with them on it.
Okay, so we can sue, we can send bills to them, we can stand up. You know you've got the people. If you'd let the other cities know that we will be there with them, chained to the trees, whatever they need, we will do Mr. it. Mr. Mayor, we can we talk about this kind it. of strategy later. Can we just get on with Point it? being, Terry... Nope. Fluoride is unhealthy and it's making us pay. Hey, well, let's keep, let's keep Wait, let's keep So keep if you going. will check into all let's that kind of stuff, talk to us, and then let me know, please. Okay. I'd appreciate I'll, I'll, it. I'll see what the, what their feelings are at this point. Well, tell them we'll be there tooth and nail. And, and, you know, they have a lot more pull. You know, we're financially, we're, as you know, I mean, we... And the state will sink if either us or Hot Springs closes. They made it. They should pay for it. Thank you. Ms. Harmon? I just have a couple questions just yes. to clarify what you had said. Um, you're already testing. You've tested. And are you saying that you're not positive or you know there are some still there are still some areas in Eureka Springs that where pipes are, are old and may have we higher levels of lead, correct? Right, that are right. city city lines. Yeah, over and, and no one you know where they are. Do you know a, that? No, that's 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 okay. kinda like until you kinda dig around. So what we do is say if, if we come up with a high test and then come out and dig around the box and, and, and try how are you to doing that though? Are you doing that at the at the at the street level or are you doing it at the house level? No, this would be at the meter. At it's the, at the meter. Because the way the way EPA looks at it, you know, it's kind of a shared service line. So you're talking about when you come off the main you bring an inch or two over, right? And so we own the half over to the meter, and so we we can. And, and what we've done in the past, when we we pull our side out, we we talk to the homeowner and encourage them if it's if we see it on that side to. But that's totally up to them. Okay, so when you're doing the, when you're doing your testing, it's all at street side. It's not in a particular home, correct? Well, the testing is from the home, yes. So the okay. test, will, when, will those numbers that you see that are state certified that come back all come from a tap, and it has to be a, you know, it can't be a filtered or any kind of a tap. It has to be the tap that people are using for drinking in their home, and it has to set for six hours, and then they, they'll pull one liter for us to test. Okay, but are you pulling anything that's not from the home level? Yeah, we we pull we pull mains from our feed from the shop, different areas around town. Yes. Okay. And do you have um, do you have a map of areas? You know what areas you fixed already, and so these new test sites are going to be areas that you're not sure about. Is that well, what we're? Well, we what we did was try to you know, and, and I think it was in '17 we redid and added. We didn't take anything out. Those original. Uh, structures are still there, but we added 30 new homes. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at uh, which they call a tier one home, which is a residential that's got to fall within, you know, old old enough to have the lead, or say before the mid 80s to have the the, the lead. So you kind of do have a map then of the areas that you know could possibly be. Yes, I mean we we what we suspect. We zero on in some areas that we don't, you know, it's new enough, we, we think it's fine. Now those are residential. That's not city lines. Those are residential lines. Right. Okay. But regardless, you know which areas wouldn't make any sense to probably well, most be less likely to have the elevated. Right. And that's, numbers, that's, right? that's the goal is, is, is not to waste these tests, it's like you're saying, on, on a structure that's we know is going to be, that's going to be fine. And you're saying from what year? 19, what is well, it? Well, we, we looked at half of them f f from structures that, that was built before 1920, and then we looked at the other half that was built before 1986. So we kind of pulled, you know, uh, the county records when the structure was built, and then we tried to look what we could if, if, if that plumbing had been re redone, if we, if we knew it or there was records of it. So we, we placed those as Tier 1, as most likely, and, and, you know, some cities can't get enough, but we have no trouble with getting enough structures of Tier 1 here, obviously. So uh, so we try to look at those areas is what we're testing. Okay, so, but there's nothing, I know you had mentioned to Melissa about putting some, some helpful information on the website, so maybe on filter information and, and things like that. Is there anything on the website that, 
and I'm not trying to cause alarm or anything, but is there anything that you would be able to put on your website that would be able to identify the areas that, that do, do you have a working map of those areas that you suspect could well, be higher or those areas that are not we, we've kind of, you know, it's kind of one of the structure. Of course, some other structures could come into that area, but, but it is the older part of town. So you're talking, you know, the loop and areas and, and different. And when, you, when I started looking, there was, there was, it was a lot older structures than I even realized. But, but, and we, we, we probably should up, you know, the type of structure. And I mean, we can't, we can't just say, you know, blanket on a street here or there. Right. I understand that. I, that's what I was asking is, is there, a, is there kind of a time frame that you could, you know, additionally put on your website with the items that you had told Melissa that could be, you know, maybe houses that are from, you know, 1920 to whatever, maybe more susceptible, those homes that are from 1990 and on. I mean, just to reassure people that, you know, they may have an issue or they may not have an issue based on the, so. We've, we've got some of that. We'll, we'll review that and we're, like I said, we're adding, we'll make sure that, 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 that we make sure that's strong. But uh, we've got some there, but, you know, that's one thing, you know, like I said, trying to, to, to service line removal and trying to get the education, public education up is, is you know. We, we have a lot of those data's down because at a certain point, the state law said you can't use any more lead in your fittings. Exactly. And that's on the website. But you know, so those, those period of time is noted on the website. Okay. Basically, if you've, if you've got an old historic home and you've not redone your plumbing, then you probably need to, you can have it tested. But if your plumbing's been redone like most of them have been, more than likely you don't have a problem. Okay. Yeah, the copper hadn't been a problem. It, it, it's usually within the type of soil, and we haven't seen that, but, but the copper... Back before, you know, 86, they, they used to, you know, it was half tin and half lead, and it, it worked better. And uh, and so th that's a lot of it's out there. So, I mean, that's... Okay. Uh, I guess I was just wondering if, you, if you've had a, a real working... Well, we're trying, yeah, we're trying to, to what we can uh, identify, and sometimes you almost have to excavate it to, to, to discover if it's there, you know. But we've got a, a, a general idea that the odds are, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll up that. Mr. McClellan? So, 86 is kind of the, the change out. I've heard that date, that year, that, that's kind of when the, they, they, when they, they banned that. Yes. They banned the, 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 the lead, the lead and, and even in the copper, in that alloy and, and all that, that they use for that malleable pipe. And yeah, and so they, some of the brass, you know, the brass had lead in it to mm -hmm. make it soft, and, and that wasn't, you know, until 14, so just a few years ago. But, but you know, the odds are that you, you, you're not going to pull, you know, higher, but you never know. Right, and right. Of course, it, the corrosion well, of the water or something, yes. Well, that's, that's, just, that's just my concern, that, that, that as we uh, have uh, reduced the problems with the city lines themselves, and, and it's more confined to the, the user line, you know, from the meter on to the home, and a lot of people did replace the lines in their structures when they remodeled, but but their service lines may still be the old the old lines that were always there. Those you know weren't necessarily unless unless they have a leak or something they why dig it up? They had, unless they had and trouble. That's, that's right. So uh, that I think is is the thing as we proceed, you know, go along with this in the next couple of years where we need to maybe have some kind of program if people need that, you know, then where they can do testing and assist with that testing and 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 then if they're financially, you know, in, in need, then maybe we can help them in some way, you know, or at least, you know, help finance it or something. I'm not sure what the what the deal is, but, you know, there's there's a thing going around right now that the city has that, that, uh, People can can get on the insurance mm -hmm. and and pay that premium for their water line. And if they have a a repair or something that needs to be done, uh, they can get that insurance and 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 have that repair made if there's a break. And maybe 
uh, it's a good time to have a yeah, need of repair. A, yeah, if, if that's found even on either side, I mean, it's, it's cold. It's got to come out. So it's got to come out. So, yeah, I mean, that would... Uh, I'm going to go out and get me some of that insurance today. <laughs> I got yeah, mine yeah, last year. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of kind of the reason they they postponed the uh, the the revision, the latest revision of lead and copper rule is is the the burden it's going to place on individuals and how to. I think it's what they've kind of you know how do we do this if we if we slap a zero lead in right now. You know how does how does that get paid for? So it's it's still in discussion mm -hmm. at the federal level. So uh, it's it's not only here. Like I said, it's any any older city is it, it's going to be an issue. And, uh, Mr. Meyer, well, Dwayne, I went over to Carol Boone and and looked at some a lot of their figures that they had, and uh, you know the water coming out of the lake is like almost neutral. Um, seven, seven, three, four, three, something like that, and and at the present time, it's coming out with a pretty high pH. It's eight point four seven, I believe, was the latest figure. They're adding lime to the water and and doing quite a bit. Uh, if there's old corrosion in your pipes at home, it doesn't matter how pure the water is coming through. It's going to it's going to bring. The sure. crud sure. out your right tap. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's you know. No, I don't know how long you know how soon they've been able to get how long it's taken them to get the pH up here to this point, but they've been starting with pretty decent water right out of the lake. Yeah, and, uh, outside. I mean, we are kind of fortunate where they do pull. But our this isn't the Flint water. River, so. So we're we're doing pretty darn good, and I don't think 65 pounds of, of fluoride in 8 million gallons of water is really the issue. I think it has more to do with the old, old pipes in town and the fact that this issue has come up and people are are now beginning to pay attention. Yeah, well, everything's aging, and, and but, but like I said, they, they're running about, you know, they'll run an average about you know, 0.67 or something fluoride parts per million in the water. So there, that, that was one of the things, and, and uh, Olson, which, you know, the, the panels, all the Carol Boone stuff, they, 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 they did it for us. They went ahead and kind of did a study of looking at different cities, and they had fluoride. And, and there was a worry, but the, they, there was nothing they could prove, like you said, that it was just going to stand out and say, hey. And the water, like you said, Carol Boone was slightly corrosive if you ran the, you know, I mean, that's just barely. So Right. So and, and they're they're taking care of that. So. No. Sorry. Okay. Any other questions for Dwayne? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dwayne. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay. This comes for our public comments. Yeah, Bob Jasinski, who's had massive problems with corrosive water. Uh, hopefully, it's. To subside. Uh, I have a less controversial issue. I spoke to the mayor about this uh, quite a while ago. It's about putting in uh, roundabouts at the two intersections where 23 and 62 come together. And as the mayor pointed out, there was no money for it, but if you've been reading the paper, I understand they're going to impose new taxes and they're going to have millions of dollars available. Also, I read in the paper last year, I guess it was about five or six months ago, there was a meeting called by the Department of Transportation with regard to work that's supposed to be done on 23. I don't know whether anyone attended that, but since there was no money at that time, I figured I didn't have a chance to go, but that would have been an opportune time to mention it. Uh, and now, uh, second issue number two, John Speed sent you all a letter, and uh, there was one comment in there that got me uh, thinking about uh, re looking through the code, and that's where he was saying that uh, he was upset, uh, number one, about this letter about saying that he had a sign an affidavit saying that uh, he resided on the premises. Uh, and, uh, and then he went on to say that uh, and planning has no business bothering me about it. Well, he was 80% right. Now, if you read the code, he has four units there which are grandfathered in. He doesn't have a CUP on those. Commercial properties don't have a CUP for bed and breakfast. And the affidavit is also going out to commercial B&Bs. He does have for one unit a CUP. 
Now, he pointed out correctly, too, that there's no requirement in the code that he, do, uh, that he go ahead and sign an affidavit. Now, I'm bringing this up, too, to show the dichotomy and the unfairness in the system here, that if you are, are in commercial or if you're grandfathered in and you don't have a CUP, there's a different revocation procedure. And it, for the people who are grandfathered or <clears throat> who are in commercial, they would, it would be a license revocation procedure to take away their occupational license in the event that they don't have an owner residing or a manager residing on the premises. If you do have a CUP, then, you know, John Speed pointed out, that, oh, planning has no authority. So he was 80% right, 20% wrong. Since he has a CUP for the one extra unit, planning would have authority to revoke that CUP. So what I think is the solution to this is something I pointed out a long, long time ago. Adopt Fayetteville ordinance for the revocation of CUPs, which has a more humane uh, process rather than the draconian system when it goes to planning. If you read the ordinance, it says that unless the property owner shows good cause, that planning shall revoke the CUP. There's no discretion given to them. And as a matter of fact, the uh, uh, Glenna Booth, when she was asked how do you enforce the law, she enforces it with the 10-day rule. You see, if it's a occupational license, you're given 10 days to correct the violation. If you go through planning, there is no grace period. It's revoked. Seven, six, five, four. And by the way, Dr. Covington says fluoride is good for the water, and what you should do is boil your water with cold water. He and I have argued for that. three years over that. <laughs> I'm going to leave this with uh, Bob here in case anybody wants to go. I'm going to boil my water until it's real cold. Then I know that it's good. <laughs> oh, you have to show me. Oh, oh. See, he's giving me one. No. <laughs> Y'all, I'm Dan Bale, and as many of you know, we're building eight houses. We call Echo Village uh, as a way of helping homeless, mental health, uh, uh, people coming out of jail, etc. We're getting close to being done. Uh, we uh, hope to have people in by June. Uh, and good news is we're coming in under budget, uh, under budget well enough that we've added two more homes uh, that will still fit within our construction loan. By doing that, suddenly we're very tight on finances. But we got two more homes for them. So anyhow, Friday I call Beth at Public Works because we're ready to have our water meters hooked up. And uh, I said, how much is it going to cost? And Beth gave me the number. Now, I was thinking it might cost about, you know, $1,500, $2,000 to get our water meters hooked up. $8,853 is what I was told it was going to take to get us hooked up. So anyhow, I went by and talked with Dwayne. Dwayne's <laughs> real cordial and has been real helpful with the project. And he explains to me uh, where that cost is. And I passed it out where you can see what it represents. Uh, there's a water connection fee of 1600 uh, meter deposit of 400 sewer connection of 2400 application fee 200 a capacity charge of 4200 that adds up to 8800 and apparently there's another small fee that gets it up to 8853 well here, here's the situation the sewer is already connected we we put in manholes and we connected at our expense and that's been done since last fall. So that $2,400 fee seems a little high for something that's already done. I, I, I think it'd be reasonable to charge us something, but maybe something more in the range of $300. The capacity fee, Duane says the ordinance requires that, but that at the discretion of the council, it can be waived in certain situations, such as a school or a hospital or something like Echo Village. That's not in the ordinance, but whatever. So I'm here to ask a favor. Uh, ask the council, uh, after talking to Butch, too, about it. He suggested I come and ask the council to authorize Duane to waive some part of this fee. And uh, what, I, what seems reasonable to me is to reduce the sewer connection fee, which we've already paid for, down to some more standard number, which is $300 per, which is already done, and maybe to consider waiving completely the capacity fee. <coughs> and so, how am I doing on time, Ken? So I've got uh, 40 <laughs> seconds left, and I will, I will stop. Any questions about that or what we our project? We can't when you're on this. Excuse me? We can't when you're doing public comment. I understand, but maybe if I had a little idea of what might happen, 
Dwayne and I can know how to move forward with this. I do need to get the water hooked Don't up. Don't leave. Can we add this to the agenda since it's kind we of We can add it to the agenda later on. Yes. You know, I mean for tonight, since this is kind of an important situation and time. It's up to the council to, to waive the <coughs> the formalities to, to put it on the agenda. Uh, you know, it's up to the council. I'll make a motion to waive the formalities and put it on the agenda. Tonight. And I'll second it. <coughs> Mr. Thomas. The formality is for somebody to make a motion to add it, oh. for there to be a second, and then for there to be a vote. And if four people vote to add it, it's added. Well, that's what we just did. That's what they're doing. They're just making that's a motion to add the formality. No. 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 We're just I asking. Mo no. the, mo the motion is to, to add it to the agenda. Yeah, no. I, I <laughs> the yes. discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I will right, we'll put it on the agenda, sir. All right. Uh, any other public comments? All right. Uh, that brings us down to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I have a letter. Oh yeah, we got a letter. I was asked to read from Gwen Bennett. Very short and sweet. Yeah, and okay. I have one too. Uh, she says, Dear City Council, the City Council is considering changing the number of members on the Planning Commission from 7 to 5 due to difficulty in maintaining a quorum. The Planning Commission is where we, get to, where we go to get permission to build a house, cut a tree, get a CUP, put up a fence, or rezone property. The Planning Commissioners also serve on the Board of Zoning of Adjustment where one would appeal to decisions by the City regarding enforcement, denial of permits, variances to lot size, setbacks, and the like. <coughs> the Council should not reduce the number of Commissioners to five. I believe that something as important as property rights decisions should be made by the current number of Commissioners, seven, in spite of the difficulty of citizens reluctant to serve. More varied opinions make these important decisions more fair. I get again, I think I need a motion to discuss item one. <clears throat> oh, I was going to ask if I can read the second letter. I need a motion to, if we're, if this is regarding this. Is so it they, regarding public, public these public are public comments? comments. Yeah. Okay, all right. If they're public comments, go ahead. All right. So I need all right. to read letters. But second, go ahead. <coughs> Okay. Okay, this one is from John Speed. <coughs> Excuse me. And this one out to all the council people and quite a few others. This past week, much to my irritation, I along with other B and B owners within the residential areas of the city <coughs> received a letter from Eureka Springs Planning Commission Chairman Ann Tandy Sally. The letter, dated March 15, 2019, instructed us, the aforementioned owners, to complete an attached affidavit certifying that we live on the properties of our respective B&Bs, that we have the affidavit notarized, and that it be returned to her attention by a specific date. While this is not an arduous task, it is one that I am refusing to do. Now let me explain why. When I purchased Hidden Springs Bed and Breakfast almost seven years ago, I was told by several business owners that this, this city is hostile towards innkeepers and business proprietors generally. I was skeptical of this report, foolishly thinking that this simply could not be true. One innkeeper in particular noted that the city has, for many years, been especially antagonistic toward B&B owners and operators. Here, too, I was sure that this was blatantly false. Events of the past years, however, have proven them to be correct. During that time, I have observed the ways in which this city haphazardly enforces code, randomly targets code violators, and oddly, also targets business owners who are trying to do little more than succeed in their ventures while trying to, trying to better Eureka Springs. If you do not believe me, I encourage you to examine past issues of your local newspapers or, even better, read the minutes of past city council meetings, planning committee meetings, as well as those of the historic district commission. A perusal of these documents will be demonstrative, I believe, a pattern of government leadership that is unfriendly and argumentative towards business owners. And so for me, the letter from Candy Sally was the infamous straw that broke the camel's back. I will not sign this letter. 
Additionally, there are no stipulations of my conditional use permits that require that I do so. To my benefit, Candy Sally oddly cited in her letter the related regulation which states, the owner of the bed and breakfast shall certify in the application that the owner or resident manager shall oc occupy the premises at all times. The meaning of in the application is pretty clear to me. On top of this, Tandy Sally is not empowered to enforce anything, nor is the Planning Commission given enforcement authority, and therefore she has no authority to send such a request or mandate. Please know that I stand well prepared to challenge this in court, and will if necessary. In the interim, Tandy Sally need not expect to find my affidavit in her mailbox. John Sweet. Is there anything else? No other public comments to be read? All right, then we'll go back to our unfinished business with Planning Commission's request to uh, get a motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. You get a second? Second. All right. Uh, Ms. Harmon? I thought that planning um, nixed this and, and withdrew it. I thought so too. So why are we still talking about it? Because uh, I think we're still on. We were on the third reading. We're no, on the third Something reading. Different. We've never that's read anything. We ended it. Yeah, there, we're on the third reading to not put to put or to leave the ordinance that allows us to put a city council member on planning and or to do away with that ordinance. Okay. Right. Correct. That's right. There was <clears throat> there was a planning meeting where there was discussion of asking council to drop it. There was no follow through on that to make it clear to council that that was the commission's intention. That's why it's still on the agenda. Okay, so you're saying that there was no letter received, a formal letter requesting that it be removed. There was no there was no contact following through on that decision. Okay, so just just to clarify, um, if they were to do it correctly, they would need to send a letter, they would need to send an email or a letter or a request to who? Well, it could come to me and I could follow through. If it were in writing, that would certainly be preferable. Okay, so if they vote on it in a meeting, you're, what you're saying is you don't recall or you don't um, know of any that was in that you don't know that they actually voted on it within a meeting <coughs> the meeting minutes there was pull discussion I don't know that there was a vote I can go back and check okay so um, however in the past I will say that uh, the chair has made it a point to say that she will do X Y or Z and I was waiting to hear that she had followed through to say that it was to be taken off the agenda. So if I were to, can I make a motion that we request planning clarify their request? Yes. yes. And I'll second it. Okay. Mr. Thomas, yeah. before we get into it, do you want to? It's this discussion. Yes. Uh, there was an email. It came out. To, it was sent to all city council members. And it was from Ann Salee saying that they had discussed taking this back and they had decided yeah. that they did want to take it back. That was that was in an email to all the city council people. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So it was, oh, I'm sorry, maybe. Can you look at it and see if it was CC'd to the clerk? If it was, uh, I can when I get home, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Buford is here. Mr. Buford, do you remember? Would you like to, as a member of the Planning Commission? All right. We requested this sometime, I think, the end of last year. At that time, we didn't have, I think, maybe four members on the Planning Commission. Uh, we requested to go down to five. Uh, Melissa Green said, well, I think we can get some more people on there. Let us put it off till March. So we put it off. It was put off until March as far as the city council voting on it. In the meantime, one or two people got on there, which put it above five. So at that point, it was kind of moved to say, well, we have 
more than five, and there's no point in saying it. People have to get off. So we were planning to get off. After that, people dropped off of planning, so we were back to four. So it's the time frame is what kind of messed it up because it, you know it got pushed back from like a November, December, back to March, and in there. Planning Commission membership changed several times, but I do think we did agree to take it off because we thought we had we, we had more than five people, but we don't have more than five people now. So, did you have a question, Mr. Thomas? No, I, I agree with yeah. what he said. Care. But the final word from to council from planning was not to reduce it. Yeah, but yeah. because of the waiting time until y'all voted on it in March. The membership right. changed. Mm -hmm. So okay. I guess we can go on planning to talk about it again, decide we want to, since we've got less than five now, or have five now, want to leave it at five or just drop and let, let have vacancy like we've had for the last three years. Well, we do have a motion and a second to, to defer this until we get a clarification from the Planning Commission. Uh, I think that's still a valid, okay. valid motion. Uh, even though, as Mr. Thomas pointed out, there was an email tip, but there had been some extenuating circumstances, it seems like. Correct. Mr. Thomas? Okay. When this, this was on our agenda a month ago, <laughs> two meetings ago. I came in to the, to four weeks ago, this was on the agenda at your request. Yes. When I came in two weeks ago, it was still there, and I was wondering, Oh, we had received an email from Ann saying take this off. I was wondering why it was still there. So I went back and I reviewed it. They had a meeting where they requested it. They had a meeting where they said, no, take it off. And then I looked at the next meeting to see if they said, yes, put it back on, and they did not. The last thing they have discussed was to remove this from our agenda. And so I, I'm going to be voting no on her motion because as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't belong on the agenda. The Planning Commission chairperson asked that it be removed. I understand. Ms. Harmon? Okay, so just, just uh, and I agree with you, it shouldn't be on our agenda, but um, perhaps we just, maybe the procedure wasn't followed correctly to make sure that it was reported correctly. I, don't, I, mean, I mean, and then I guess maybe that's just, um, how, I mean, if a letter comes to city council, I guess the question is, if a letter comes to city council, but perhaps maybe Ann doesn't get it, or maybe the mayor doesn't get it, or somebody is missing off of that list, it's still valid, but we need to figure out how we communicate to each commission that they communicate it correctly so it gets on the agenda or it comes off the agenda. Maybe that's just our issue. I'm curious to see whether... I was CC'd on it because council, council puts items on the agenda, but they don't actually build it. Mm -hmm. And so if the information wasn't communicated to the people who actually affect this document, that's where it fell off and, the And that's track. kind of what I'm trying to clarify, too. Well, is by knowing who was once CC'd. Once we find out <coughs> if you were on it or not on it, then we just need to clarify to them or in, in to all commissions, I guess, how they go about doing well, making sure Well, the, it's the there. question right now is whether or not to go ahead and defer this. Mr. McClellan? Yeah, if, if we go ahead and, and vote on the motion made, it'll give the Planning Commission the opportunity to to restate their position. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I mean, is that, isn't that okay? Sounds okay to me. Well, well I mean, they send an email stating their position. Well, right. Okay, so they send us another one. Well, I mean... I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and, you know, all those in favor of uh, deferring this into our next meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. 5 1. Yes. I will double check with, and get something from the chairman. Um, all right. That brings us to the ordinance uh, 2275, revoking ordinance 2179. On third reading. Mr. McClung? Motion to discuss. Second. All right. Motion and second. Discussion. All right. Uh, hearing no discussion. Oh, wait, wait, just three hands up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. His was first. <laughs> Mr. McClung? I'd like to make a motion that we suspend the rules and read ordinance number 2179 on its third reading. 
by title only. I'll second. Okay, motion discuss. Mr. Thomas? This was the, the ordinance that we read uh, for the second time last meeting because we had the opportunity to reject it tonight. That was your, your rationale for not rejecting it two weeks ago. I don't see any reason to, to, uh, to do away with this. It's an emergency backup ordinance. And it, you know, I just don't see any reason. And also I'm concerned, I agree with, with Gwen Bennett's letter. She expressed what I have been thinking, you know, very clearly. You need to broaden the representation for vote of the, the important votes that planning commission makes. Ms. Snyder? Um, well, Gwen has said it's exactly right, and you backing up is exactly right, but you don't enforce that by giving one person two chances to vote for or against something. I'm going to reiterate for the millionth time. It is unfair. People have <clears throat> problems with each other for whatever reason, and it is totally unfair to have one person be able to vote twice for or against an issue. It's not right. We do have the people. This is a normal planning commission situation, the on again, off again of membership. We should not drop it, nor should we allow council, if they're going to be able to vote in both places, to be on both things. We should just go back to the way it was. No council people allowed on planning commission. Ms. Green? Um, I agree with Bob and I agree with what Gwen Bennett said and what I've said. I don't want to change the um, total of the planning commission down. I, I think it's important to have so. <coughs> I think that the people that sit on council, if they were to be put back onto planning to fill in, have integrity and ethics that they would have if it was a conflict, they would know when and not to vote. And I don't think that there's anything unfair as long as you're following the law. Your vote's going to stay the same no matter what. Mr. Thomas? Uh, I, I have two points. Uh, the first one is about maybe almost a year ago, Historic District Commission tried to change their voting policy so that they based their vote on the majority of members present at the meeting instead of the membership, mm -hmm. which meant they could decide an issue with three votes. City Council at the next meeting came in and passed an ordinance saying no, you know, your vote is based on your total membership. The reason that City Council did that was because we saw that with Historic District Commission, three people being able to make decisions for that commission was inappropriate. If it's inappropriate for Historic District Commission, it's inappropriate for Planning Commission. The second question I would have is, if planning drops down to three members, Ms. Schneider, which would we prefer, to have a city council person step in so that they can continue to do business or just for them to cease to do business? Oh, well, Schneider. I didn't know if I could answer. Um, talking membership of commission? They would, they would get people in. This is, oh, after 45 years, we've seen this time and time again. They get down to the bare minimum of four people, and people have stepped up to the plate. They, honest to God, have. By sitting there and saying, well, because of integrity, yes, we have integrity. We would not have to worry about a single one of us at this table right now sitting there and using a like or dislike of someone, but you have to look to the future. Who can we say is going to be on this table in 10 years? We can't. And this has been the problem that has shown up time and again in Eureka stuff, commissions, politics, however you want to word it. Time and again over the years, this has crept up, not, thank God, as bad as it does in the, in the country, but we have had it happen. So you plan for the future. Just because we have integrity doesn't mean in five or ten years all of them are going to have integrity. You don't risk the fairness to our people by saying, well, it's a little slow right now. We should put somebody in there. No. And when you don't have a planning commission meeting, and it has happened because they are short and don't have their four people, their quorum, 
they have to cancel that meeting and so far every time by the next meeting they have had their quorum people have jumped onto the plate and they have done it Mr. Green I can remember in the 17 years I've been here I can remember times when we only had three commissioners and for three or four months we did not do any city business if someone applies for a CUP sends out their letters and that meeting is canceled because of a lack of quorum because there's only three members that person has to reapply has to send out the same amount of letters seven or eight years ago I was begged to be on the Planning Commission because they had three members they didn't have a quorum and I agreed and I was going to stay on for eight months to fill out that term I didn't want to be a planning commissioner every time I came to quit we'd get down to four members and so I stayed for seven years mainly for that I mean at, at times we'd get up to seven I think that I, and I am not I don't ever want to be on planning again but I think this <laughs> is an important ordinance that will allow if there is a hardship for our planning commission and our city to do business. Any other comments? I have a question, a clarification, because I misunderstand. I thought that you served on planning under this ordinance. This you ordinance said. was written so I could go on to planning because they were down to four but people. But you just said no, that never <coughs> happens because somebody. No, I didn't. Always no, I didn't. I said. When they ha uh, don't have a quorum, people have stepped up to the plate. At this point, it's the time she's talking yeah. about. That was when they went ahead and passed this, so I could go ahead and go back on. To, I've been on, what, three or four mm -hmm. times. And it worked so out. So I could go time. back yeah. on, because I have integrity, because you would do, all of us here do. Who's going to say what we have in five years? That's the problem. But at the time, if you remember, I have said this since this has been brought up, it was understood, one vote only, either at planning or at city council. I have no problem with that. If you all want to sit there and let council sit down there, but they only get to vote in one of the two places, I'll be all for it. Giving them two votes, I will not vote for. It's not fair. <coughs> Any further, Mr. McClung? Uh, can we, uh, instead of taking a vote tonight, can we defer this? Again, you can make a motion. To defer I make a motion that we defer I'll again second. for the next okay. meeting, and we'll hear something from the planning commission. We'll kind of get a little better feel. Maybe somebody's somebody's joined. I'll, you know, I'll second that. Feel. Let's just kind of give it a little time. We're not under any duress right now. Let's let's kind All right. of. All right, we got a motion to uh, defer it for another meeting. Any I'll second. Discussion. I already did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a second. Any further yeah. discussion on that? No. I went with this. All, right. all, of, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I thought you said there was any discussion. I'm opposed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Do we Mr. Have Chairman, to Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. You you said is there any discussion? And I started to discuss, and you. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I asked it, and I didn't say it. I apologize. Okay. Would you like to go ahead? I mean, we've already voted. Yeah, but, we've already voted. Thank but you. But do you have it? Would you like to discuss something? Our point is moot. Thank you. Okay. I apologize. I didn't see your hand. Okay. Up, Thomas. No. All right. That brings us up to uh, our ordinance uh, resolution for police general fund capital. Motion to discuss. Second. All right. Uh, this is a resolution that uh, authorizes us to buy uh, cameras from uh, general capital funds. Uh, the money is there. It's been allocated. We just never put it into our budget. And so this is, uh, allows the uh, finance director to go ahead and appropriate, the, appropriate and authorize the use of these funds for purchase six cameras uh, and a server for the police department for the body cams. So, any discussion? Ms. Green? Um, I'll make a motion to assign the resolution a number and read it for passage. For passage. Okay. Got a motion by Ms. Green. Do I have a second? Second. All right, Ms. Any discussion? 
Ms. Harmon? I just have a question. Um, where is the server going to be located? Police Department. Okay, so they so the they'll have all act, they'll have access to all of that. Is there a secondary uh, location? It's going to be up in the going to be up in the cloud. Okay, so but more than one person will have access to that. It won't be just the police department. Right? No, we'll it should be it. police department. These are police teams. <coughs> okay. If. Um, why would Mitch McClellan? I think what she's maybe thinking is that if something happens that's uh, that's not kosher, that maybe the Somebody one of the police agents might get erased. Or yes. is there a secondary I mean, location? What you would do oh, I'm you sure would there's a secondary. I'm, I'm not sure how it works. But well, I know it can be in the cloud, yeah. but there need if, if um, you're going to do this. More yeah, than one I'm person needs to have access to that I'm sure outside the police department. I'm not sure how that works, but I'm sure well, they the would legal assign you a password or yeah. something so you get access. Somebody would have yes. a access to it. Yeah. Okay, that's my concern. <coughs> He's the boss. So, any further discussion? Uh, all right. Roll call. Miss Green. Yes. Miss Snyder. Yes. Mr. Meyer. Yes. Mr. McClung? Mm hmm Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Six zero. The resolution number will be seven five two. A resolution to appropriate and authorize the use of certain funds from the general capital fund of the city to purchase body cameras and associated equipment for the police department. Whereas the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, having been informed of the needs of the city with regard to police operations, including office and citizens officer and citizen safety, and whereas the City Council has established that it will be able to finance the needed equipment for $25,000, and whereas the City Council has determined that there is approximately $25,000 budgeted but not appropriated, in the general fund capital for cameras and equipment, which has not been allocated for use, other use at this time. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that the City Council does amend the 2019 budget for the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, to authorize, allocate, and appropriate the use of $25,000 now in city funds under general fund capital for the purchase of body, cameras, and associated equipment for the Eureka Springs Police Department. Furthermore, the mayor is hereby authorized to assist and oversee the city departments and commissions in use of allocated funds. Ms. Harmon? I know this doesn't have anything. I'm a, I know we've just done the ordinance or assigned the number, but um, is, what would we do in order to make sure that there were additional individuals outside uh, the police department. I'll, I'll double check and see what the status okay. is. Yeah, right, and let you know. You. Okay. Uh, that brings us up to our next item, uh, which is uh, consideration of reducing or waiving uh, parts of the fees for the water sewer connection fees for Echo Village. Motion to discuss. Oh, second. Okay. I make a motion that we do, <coughs> as Dr. Dan Bell suggested, and lower the prices considering what this is for. Um, this would be the city's part of doing Echo Village. Do you want to, you want to have a specific reduce, reduction of? Exactly as discussed by Dr. Dan Bell. You reduce it down to $2,500? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Did I get a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, other items. It, this was total. Yeah. Ms. Green? Well, what, what he was talking about, I, I would like to waive the capacity charges and the, the rest of them, because didn't you, Dr. Bell, say that, that that one could be? Yeah, that is. That's being canceled. Okay. That would be the only one that we would And cancel. this drops to three, and this drops to 25 for the total. Taking out these two. There's yeah. a $2,500 sewer hookup. Yeah, come up to the mic. There's a $2,500 sewer uh, hookup. On, on 2400 below the 8000 2400 uh, But you want to drop to 300 
Yes, because it's already hooked up and there's right. no additional expense incurred by the city. Okay, is it totally done? So could we just go ahead and delete the whole 2400? We could. Uh, Dwayne, but I'm, do, I'm Dwayne just again. do you want to join yeah, Dan up here? Verify All right. Dwayne, <laughs> do you want to come up and yeah. he was okay. kidding. see what we got here, okay. too? <laughs> you guys work together. <laughs> Yeah, we we talked earlier today, but uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, capacity fee. Uh, I don't know how you're going to. I mean, if you if you waive that, I mean, you're opening a can of worms there. Okay. I mean, that's. I mean, we've looked at. I mean, uh, you know, a school or something. If it doesn't add, like when the, the high school, of course, they closed one, and we've done that in the past. But as far as just since I've been here, we haven't just waived it. But but uh, but Dan's got a good point. I mean, on the I'm thinking what we could do. Legally, is is with with the, the sewer connection fee because you're laying in, and, and we've talked about this before. Is is the lift station phase two? Dan's going to maintain that, and, and then I, I know they're you know phase two. They're, they're wanting some more information. I just heard today back on all that stuff from the health department. But it, you know, of course we've we've knocked off. Of course, 400 is refundable. We've knocked off 1,200 on the water. Because you know, he's bought some stuff and they've laid in, uh, but say that connection fee, that, that $2,400, if you, you know, I couldn't waive it. It's, it's a connection for each unit. But, but looking at the circumstances of of, of what he's done to, because we can't, we can't only afford to maintain. The thought was if we maintain the lift station forever ourselves. It's, you know that sets a precedent, so we we maintain them all that come in, and we just can't handle it. So if we could waive the the twenty four hundred dollars, you know, I think would be something you could do without any problem. Okay, what's the capacity thing? Explain that in English, it's, please. Uh, well, it's it, it was set in, but it's, instead of coming back and, and asking for increases in, in water and wastewater, it, it was set in not to, to put on everybody. That, so when it's, somebody adds to the system or connects. It's it's based off the city ordinance. It's it's three dollars uh, per gallon, and it's set off of well, the type of structure. And, it's, and of course, he's not. These are not to the point of a single home. It's not that expensive. But off our city code, uh, we calculate that of that participating uh, of, of gallon uses by three, and then by eight. That's how we come up with that figure. So it's we treat everybody the same. Uh, with that, is this a one-time fee? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and 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 that's the way it's set up. Then unless there's more uh, added to the sewer system, because once you add it to, we have to treat it and we have to uh, uh, maintain it. Can that be reduced? Well, you could you could reduce it, but what do you you know? I mean, if do you base that on? Yeah, I don't you know, know. From this point on, if somebody else comes up, what do you base that on? Is the only thing I was on the capacity fee. The only thing that worries me is everybody will want to reduce at that point. Ms. All right. So, um, out, out of all of these things, legally, which one can you could you? That's sewer connection fee because, okay. uh, like I said, because you know it's a new construction they're laying it in, and 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 and, and with the extra with Dr. Bell is going to take over that lift station. So. Okay. Is there any portion of that that you still have an expense associated with? Well, we we would have an expense, but not to that degree. You know, it, it in, in our in our. So I guess what I'm saying is, what number would you feel comfortable with? Zero. Well, <laughs> I mean, we can we, we, On that one. we can. I mean, it, it, just one hookup is three hundred dollars. So that was considering the aid. So I mean, you could leave it three, but I, I said, you know, legally, if the council wanted to waive that based on the facts here, you could, you could waive the sewer connection. Now, the okay, but capacity it, opens a whole different can. But of again, what I'm asking you is, you do have an, you still have a cost associated with that. Correct? Yeah, and it's, it's at some point, I want to come back, and we need to erase those those fees that there are certain fees that were okay so but not um, just for to for the okay, across so the board but so again the, the question I have for you is not what City Council wants to do but what do you feel comfortable with that's I'm looking for a number well, well if, you know as long as as long as we we have the guarantee of the, of the cost reduction from the, the lift station I think which 
we, we shouldn't have any problem there, right? I mean, we keep talking about the lift station. That's not even where we are. That's a potential out in the future. This has nothing to do with next phase. This is just this phase at this moment right now. So I don't want you all to be confused about some other lift station. Okay. The future phases will have a lift station, but we'll be back talking about that. Okay, so and, and that is a name for all of that. That's, a, that's another point. If when phase two comes in, you know, how do how do how do you want to handle that? I mean, because that will that increases capacity fees. Any anything that's built from this point on would have fees. Okay, so so I'm sorry, but so what are you comfortable with? Enough. Well, I mean, totally. If, if I could, I would be comfortable with, with dropping that 2,400 to 300 and make it totally okay. just one connection. Okay. okay. And then, as far as the additional costs, um, as far as the capacity cost, I understand what you're saying. As far as if we do it for one, we have to then other people will. Yeah, and that, that's beyond me. I, can, I obviously cannot reduce that. I mean, that would be up to council. Okay. But I don't. I mean, what would you base it on? I mean, it's the uh, decision. Well, again, the ordinance says, Wayne, well, you told us <laughs> that at the discretion of the council, it can be waived. Right. Well, yeah, it, it can be. So it's not like it's illegal. It's, right. Uh, okay. up to the but Dwayne, you're comfortable with the you're comfortable with the sewer connection costs going down to 300, but you're not comfortable mm -hmm. with the capacity changing at this point. Yeah, I mean, that that, that at some point. Treatment of waste. If you start, if you start giving that out, well, then how do you pay for the plan and the upgrades and then down the road? Uh, but I mean, that's that's not my decision. Mr. Green, um, so you're comfortable with reducing the sewer connection down to 300? The the rest of them, anybody else applying in town would be expected to pay the rest of them. Yes. Okay. That. Mr. Snyder. <clears throat> okay, so as I said when I made my motion, in view of what Echo Village is and what it's about, we could remove the capacity fee and word it in such a way that this is the city's donation to Echo Village, <clears throat> which would give Echo Village the zero that they're looking for, and it would not make it liable to any and everybody else that does it because this would be our part of Echo Village. Ms. Harmon? I guess I just, by saying that, I just have, I just, the, the issue I have is that if you, if you say it, I'm not saying it's not a, a, a great thought or cause or anything like that, but you kind of open up a can of worms in that then you know, the next person comes along and they say, well, you, you didn't treat me the same as you did them, and I'm just as worthy as they were. So I don't feel comfortable with, with, with doing something like that just because it sets a precedent for the next and the next. It's like the money at CAPC. I, that, that's just my opinion. So. Ms. Green? Um, I agree with Mickey and I agree with Susan. <laughs> I... I I mean, I'm just so pleased with what you've done, Dr. Bell. I, I do agree that if, if we do this, we are opening up a can of worms. A cup of love could be here. My Dear Humane Society could be here. That, that's my biggest problem. I mean, I'd love to give you this. I, I just, I, I'm a little worried. I, I have no problem ending the sewer connection at all. I mean, I think, and if it wouldn't open up a can of worms, I'd give you the capacity. Mr. Thomas? As I understand it, the code says at council's discretion. That's all it says? Well, basically, I mean, if, if it's, it, it mentions schools and hospitals. Right. So, I mean, it would be at discretion, but, but council has to have a reason. So the council can't spend money without a right. justified legal reason. But if we decided that we wanted to consider amending an ordinance or writing a new ordinance, which would take a month, he could be refunded his money, right? If we included that in the ordinance. Yeah, if you open, if you if you put a some, something uh, a definition a, a definition of that that they fit in, and and, and like most of them, maybe somebody else would fit into that too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm still 
and our definition then, when we write this ordinance, our definition could be specific to charitable organizations, 501c3 organizations. We could define who's eligible. I think that's a good way to go. Limited opportunities down the road. Limited options. Right. Mr. McClung? So if I understand uh, Dwayne correctly, then what he's suggesting is a $2,700 or $2,100 reduction to a balance of $6,700. Yeah, and we, of course, and based off of, of, of the situation, because we're taking those mains over over there that, that he's laying in, we've knocked off we knocked off $1,200 off the water already. We, we re reduced $1,200 off the water tap fee because uh, we're not doing it completely all that. We're coming in setting the meters and, and they have to pay for those. And, and of course, at some point, it'll get $400 back. Deposits will come back. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's like you're correct. I'd like to make an amendment to Mickey's motion. <coughs> the, uh, we set the fee at an aggregate of sixty-seven hundred dollars. I'll make a second, or I'll second. Uh. Okay, <coughs> Ms. Grant, uh, Snyder. Well, all I'm all I'm saying is, <coughs> just because we would do this one time, doesn't mean we'd have to do it with everybody who came down the road. Because, like with CAPC, that y'all are familiar with. They get money requests all the time. They'll give X amount of dollars to this one, but not to this one. It's the same thing. It's at <clears throat> it's at their discretion. So just because we want to be part of Echo Village doesn't mean we necessarily want to be part of Monkey Village. You know, just because we do one doesn't mean we have to do the other, and it's at our discretion. So there's no lawsuit involved. Why don't you want to be a part of Monkey Village? What's the matter with that? I'd rather have Kangaroo Village, but that's All right. Just me. Any further discussion? <laughs> yes. Mr. Thomas? I, I would like to amend. Well, we've got, this will be the second amendment. Mm -hmm. okay. Three, I'll wait, then we need to start over. We've got two on the table. Do we need to withdraw anything? Mm -mm. Okay. okay. No? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas, what? Uh, we were getting too many amendments. I'll wait. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on this? Uh, we got a motion to amend uh, the ordinance down to, I mean, the uh, fees down to sixty-seven hundred dollars. Uh, okay. Total. What happened to mine? He amended it, and we. And any further discussion? No. All those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No, I won't mind. Five one. Uh, so I guess the original motion is to defer to the go fees. With the numbers to go with the numbers as pointed out by Dr. Bell. Is that correct? No, it's been well, amended. Well, the amendment to overrode yeah. the original motion. So that makes that. So that makes my null and void because I'm the only one for it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not sure there was a second to the motion to remove the capacity fee. I did. Yeah. Oh, she, thank you. She seconded my thingy. Yeah, I did. Okay, so are we are we good with that then? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, we still have to actually vote Approve. on approving oh, that's the what ID I, in general. That's what I said <laughs> with the, the original motion. Yeah. Was to that, reduce it down to, um, to the 2,500. 2, right. But that got amended down to 6,500. 67. And that was and the amendment. We just voted on the amendment. All right. Well, that's what I asked. So the I'm going to make this. It's the motion is to def, to uh, reduce the fees, basically. As amended to six thousand seven hundred dollars. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any further discussion on that? No. All those in favor, sing five, by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So moved. I'm really glad you clarified because the first motion was not even possible to understand. <laughs> All right. Uh, that brings us down to uh, agenda setting. Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I have two items. Uh, first one would be a report from our ADA coordinator on our. Uh, transition plan and status report. 
Okay. And the second one would be a discussion of, I don't know the number or anything, but this the statement in the code that says at council's discretion. I'd like to discuss that and see. The ordinance update. On the water. <coughs> yeah, okay, I understand. Well, your discussion of what we're just talking about, reducing the fees, the capacity fee. At council's discretion. I'd okay. Like to, to look at that. We'll, we'll get a copy of that ordinance and right. bring that up. Okay. Question. Are you talking specifically about the capacity fee? No, just that changing the payments the at fees. council's discretion. I think that is a capacity fee. Oh, it only? I want to make sure I understand okay, well exactly what part that, of code you're talking about. Whatever that statement, wherever that statement is, that's I'll what find I want. Out. And I believe capacity it's capacity fee. fee. Anywhere and everywhere that statement is. <laughs> um, we need Ms. seconds. Snyder? Oh, do we have a second? <coughs> we need a second, second on second. both. On both. Okay. Both. Ms. Snyder? Um, do we need to add a discussion about adding a siren warning signs, or was that something that you were going to work on with Twain? I'm sorry, what? <clears throat> we talked um, a month ago about putting out warning signs in the area where the, the uh, month or the, yeah, the third Tuesday of the month to warn drivers don't have a heart attack at noon. All right. Is that something we need to discuss, or is that something that gets dealt with? Are we scared? Through police, public, and mayor. Are we scaring drivers? Yeah, we're scaring I was drivers. To we're scaring Ms. I Snyder. I almost went off the highway because I was right there when right. it went off. We got I a motion. No I'm going to put that on the council agenda. Okay. okay. If That's council all. wants it. Yes. Sure. I'll is there a second? That. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any further? Anybody else? Uh, all right, council comments. Mr. Thomas? Yes, I'd like to ask everybody uh, on council to go back and, and uh, look, look back to when we voted on the HDC ordinance, that, or it wasn't HDC, it was an ordinance that said that all uh, commissions would have to base their majority vote on the number of members because I think that, that applies to the uh, reduction of, of planning commissions. Now. What? I'm but sorry. Is that something that, um, that Harry and I can access since we weren't part of? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. You have a copy of that okay. ordinance. The newer one? You the have a copy of okay. that okay. ordinance. Okay, sorry. Let me go. Let's call. Ms. Green? Okay. Um, I would like to say something that's very dear to me. There is a House Bill number 1778 by Representative Jim Servilla out of Little Rock, toughening animal cruelty laws. I would ask that U.S. citizens lobby Bob Ballinger, our state representative, to support Bill 1778, especially since he was very prominent at the Good Shepherd Humane Society Gala Saturday night. So I would think he would be in support of it, and I would like to ask the citizens to please lobby him. And otherwise, glad to be here, glad to be alive. <laughs> Ms. Snyder? <laughs> um, actually, nothing. Ms. Harmon? Can I read something? Sure. Okay. So I just wanted to read something out of, um, and this is in regards to some of the questions about um, whether or not planning has the right or authority to um, send out letters asking for additional information and or updates on um, conditional use permit um, pull these or those that, that pull the cup. Um, 140808 in the municipal um, book that I have um, for the city um, says that a conditional use um, permit is required for any use which is not a use allowed by right in any zoning district of the city. Conditional use permits will be issued only when authorized by the terms of this chapter. Approval of conditional use shall not be a matter of right, but shall only be granted when the proposed use is in harmony with the character of the zone where it shall be located. Once a conditional use is approved, that use may continue so long as the owner abides by the requirements of this subsection and any special conditions placed upon the use by the Planning Commission. The conditional use is granted to the applicant for a specific use at a specific property and is not transferable. And I guess probably the one thing that I do want to emphasize is that, um, that planning does have the right to place special conditions 
um, even after that conditional use is approved. So that's in 140808. Okay, anything else? Mr. Meyer? Nothing today. Mr. McClellan? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we've got some uh, special things coming up. Uh, if you have not uh, been around Upper Spring Street and down around downtown, you may have noticed or you may not have noticed that we've installed new doggy waste stations. Oh. So that makes all the doggies happy. Um, there are four stations on the Upper Loop and four stations running along Main, Main Street downtown. Uh, I want to thank Public Works and Parks for getting together and putting those up and getting them around. We we'll hope that the locals and the tourists alike will take advantage of these stations to help our, uh, keep our Eureka Springs beautiful and enjoyed by all, and especially our dogs. Uh, as far as events go, March 30th at 7.30 p.m. here at the auditorium, we'll have the Del Show, Del Shores Comedy Night. And the next night on the 31st at 2.30 p.m., We've got uh, we got talent a fundraiser to send local kids to summer music camp, and this is always a good show. So come out and help support our local uh, musicians. And then April the fifth through the seventh, we have spring diversity all over town. And then on the sixth at eight thirty, we have uh, Miss Coco Peru at the auditorium. Oh. And can I add one item to you? Sure. Um, uh, the Inn of those arcs is having the magicians thing this weekend. Um, yes, it is. Okay. Um, I saw Randy, and he said that if it's a free oh, right. event, so if anybody has um, folks that would like to come and see, I guess they get together in the convention center and have been doing it for a number of years, but it is free, and they'll be doing their magic. And that will be Friday at 7.30 and okay. Saturday at 7.30 oh. at the convention center at the end of the Ozarks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Randy, for uh, cool. hosting that. Anybody else have anything? Mm -hmm. If not, uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. So moved. I want to know about these doggies.